I um, work with the Campo Coalition, and I'm going to talk about the voter ID law. Uh, this law took effect, as you know, last session, and the law mandates that those who are registering to vote must provide proof of citizenship, such as proof of such as a birth certificate, in order to register. It also mandates that voters must provide a photo ID to vote on election day. Uh, while the photo ID portion of this law took effect on January 1st, 2012, the legislature reached an agreement that the proof of citizenship mandate would be delayed until 2013, so not to suppress the vote in 2012. Um, these provisions will make voting difficult for everybody, and it is voter suppression. Um, as soon as this agreement was made and the law was passed, Secretary of State Chris Kobach began campaigning to rush implementation of proof of citizenship. And when I say voter suppression, here's what I mean. The 34% of women of voting age who lack proof of citizenship with their current legal name will be suppressed. The 12% of people earning less than $25,000 a year who have no access to proof of citizenship will be suppressed. The 25% of African Americans who do not have valid photo ID necessary to vote will be suppressed. And should, should the proof of citizenship mandate affect, or should uh, the proof of citizenship mandate take effect, uh, grassroots voter registration, as we know, will be impossible. This means that churches, community groups, your political parties, and even your campaigns will be unable to mobilize the electorate. Now, why? Well, Chris Kobach says that it's for voter uh, security against voter fraud. But in the last 16 elections since 1997 in Kansas, that's over 10 million ballots casted, there was only one case of actual voter fraud prosecuted, and this law wouldn't have prevented it. If you compare that to other stats, you'll find that you're twice as likely to be, you're more than twice as likely, um, excuse me, you're more likely to be struck by lightning twice in the same day than you are to commit voter fraud in the state of Kansas. Hard to say because it's hard to believe that people would fall for an excuse like that to pass voter suppression, but it happened. And as mentioned, a lot of it was as a result of the ALEC legislators. Some of uh, you are present, and this is an ALEC bill that is spread throughout the nation through ALEC. Um, and here's what it's really about. It's not about voter security. It's about voter suppression. The states who have introduced this bill hold enough seats in the Electoral College to determine the 2012 election. What they're trying to do is keep the electorate from going in the electorate, many of whom have called out who the members of ALEC are, whose business interests are more uh, it is, is more powerful than their interest in their own state, you're trying to keep these folks from voting you out, and I would hope that the rest of you that believe in democracy uh, would convince your colleagues to stand with the voters of Kansas, stand with the people of Kansas, and preserve democracy in our state by stopping the rushed implementation of proof of citizenship and by overturning this law altogether. The Department of Justice has already taken a strong stance against this. The Ninth Circuit has ruled that proof of citizenship is unconstitutional. This is a fight that Kansas can't afford to take the wrong side on, and we can't afford to jump in head first by rushing implementation of proof of citizenship. This could cost our state a lot, and it could cost a lot of people their right to democracy. Thank you.